Holy Spirit, we thank you, we bless you. We give you all glory and adoration. We exalt, we magnify you, hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the peace that we received and we still have. In the name of Jesus Christ, God bless you as you connect, please. Can you just share this on your wall? We are still praying because the victory that God has given us so far is peace. You know, a lot of people predicted doom and gloom, even though we are not out of the woods yet, but the will of the enemy did not prevail. God is delaying us because he wants us to not get out and do harm to ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you as you connect. We are still praying uh, in the name of Jesus Christ. And the word of God for us today is watchmen by assignment. We are watchmen. We're going to talk about it a little bit. And we're going to deep prayer today for America and the world at large. But for America, at, you know, it's going to be our priority in our prayer today because we have been praying for this nation. And I believe that we have this territory in our view, based on our assignment. You know, all of a sudden, Georgia is also the toss up. But all those things, God is taking care of it. I don't want you to be afraid. Let your heart not be troubled. It doesn't matter which side you are in. Are you blue or red? Or are you just independent or you are nobody? We are all Americans. So I want us to hold on to the will of God to prevail. Because God must make his name known. It doesn't matter what God say or bring that is what will stand the bible said there are many counsel in the heart of a man but the will of the lord shall stand let the will of god stand in the name of jesus christ the silence of god many times is a very big speech and when god speak we have to do his will so we thank god where we are today i want you to just appreciate god as you connect share this on your wall let us give glory to the holy name of the Almighty. He is, I am that I am, ancient of days, omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscience God. He's mightier than the mightiest, he's greater than the greatest. He is God all by himself. There is none like him, there, will, there is none that will be compared unto him. Thank you, Holy Spirit. You are mighty. You are a great God. You are, I am that I am, ancient of days, omnipresent, omniscience God, omnipotent God. We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. The Bible said the entrance of the word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. We are talking about watchmen by assignment. You know, God assigns us. Every time God is sending you to a place, God have a view of a territory on site, and God will send you, sometimes you are a watchman into your family. God calls us in different places. Watchmen are people that cover an area or cover a person or a family, intercessors. You know, many of us, we don't know what view of territory that God has placed us, but sometimes circumstance will lead you to that. It can be sometimes a loss of something or some bad experience and it puts you into the marathon spirit of praying. And before you know it, you are now over a territory. 
that God will hold you responsible for that territory or that person or that family. And if you're a Christian, automatically you have to know that you are called to, to be a light in your family. That's the first, your first priority, either to your father or mother, husband or brother, grandmother, grandfather, you know, children. That is your territory at view. Then sometimes it increases. I want us to go to the word of God. Isaiah chapter 62, look at verse 6 and 7. The Bible says, God said, I have set watchmen, watchmen upon thy walls. I've set watchmen. So there are people watching. You know, we have been praying for America and the, the nation at large. Even before the COVID arrived, some of these things that are happening, God put it in our mouth. We didn't know it's going to be coronavirus. I remember in October, November last year when I was talking about respiratory illness that the devil is going to cast. By the time COVID came, I didn't know that, you know, when you put yourself in this order, God begin to reveal things to you. Sometimes he doesn't give you names. He just puts the, the words in your mouth. He says, open your mouth and I will feel it. And that's what we did. But look at Isaiah 62, verse 6. You see, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, you can put your family there, which shall never hold their peace day or night. Ye that mention the Lord, keep not silent. So God wants us to continue to pray. It is not over yet. We are not out of the womb, Lord, especially when it comes to the um, what exercise of our rights that we just did here in America. We are not out yet. We, have, we don't have a winner yet. But God said, keep not silent. He said, and give him no rest till he establish, until he makes Jerusalem a praise on earth. Until God makes something that you are praying for to be a praise. Until this, the result of what you are praying has come. Sometimes it can be a judgment that you are praying for. It's not all positive. But when you are a watchman, you are over a place. You are over a territory. And we are watchmen. And if you don't know, the, the spirit of intercession, sometimes it gets born, it gets activated out of aid, out of something. I know a lady that lost a family member. And uh, in the course of that, she was devastated. And she was almost questioning God, why should this person die? And in the course of that, she went into this marathon fasting and prayer and she never came out of it. She's still an intercessor up till date. In that, God began to put territory. She became an intercessor over her family and over the church where she was going. Sometimes she would have revelation and call the pastor and say, Daddy, this is what I just saw. And I'm telling you, she was on point. God made her to be in the upper room. And sometimes when you say, why should somebody die before that thing came? They bothered to pray was put upon her when she lost a family member that was so dear to her. And sometimes it might not be a loss. It can even be something pro prosperity that will lead you into this place of great aura of prayer. And you find that God will start to put territory in your view. I remember when Jesus told Peter, the enemy could have switched, swift you, but I have prayed for you. That means Jesus was covering his, I remember when they told him that, look, John the Baptist disciples, they, they fast every time and they pray, but I don't see your disciples fasting and praying. Jesus laughed. He said, well, when the bridegroom is with you, you don't, have to, you don't have to close your mouth. You have to eat. But when the bridegroom is taken away from you, then you must have to pray. He said, because the bridegroom is with them, they don't need to pray and fast. And you remember in Mark chapter 9, when they brought this young boy to them, and to, to pray for the boy to be healed from the spirit of palsy and death and dumb. They prayed, laid hand on the boy, nothing happened. Jesus said, this kind cannot go except by praying and by fasting. But we knew what happened when Jesus died. The Bible said they gathered themselves in the upper room and began to pray. 50 days they were still there praying. The Holy Ghost came. There was a spirit of intercession that was released. And the whole of these men, 120 of them that were left, in the upper room, they became watchmen over Israel and the world at large. They were the ones that determined what happened. So I'm telling you, sometimes circumstances can create that aura of intercession and great aura of prayer, whereby you are translated into the Holy of Holies. So we are watchmen by assignment. Sometimes God assigns you a territory or a person 
or a family or a place. So the Bible says, I have set what men upon thy walls. Oh, America, we shall neither hold their peace day or night. I want us to go and see if you are a watchman and you don't really do what you ought to do, what will happen to you. And if the people you are watching over does not do what you have told them about, Sam and Alan, what happens? I am go to the book of Ezekiel 33. I want us to read from verse 1 to 9. We are just going to take our time and read and pray. The Bible says, again, Ezekiel 33, verse 1. The Bible says, again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of Israel, the children of thy people, and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land takes a man of their coat and set him for their watchman. Verse 3. If when he sees the sword come upon the land and blew the trumpet and warned the people, verse 4, then whatsoever, whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and take not warning, if the sword comes and take him away, the blood shall be upon his own head. Let me explain now. So God was saying to the prophet Ezekiel, he said, if I send out a sword, and somebody is clothed with a coat to watch. And he sees the sword coming to the land and warn the people of the land, say, look, a sword is coming. Anyone that did not give way or change their ways and they killed, the blood of that person is upon the person's head. But look at now how it begins to get tricky. But if he take it, warning, but he that taketh the warning shall deliver his soul, verse six. But if the watchman sees the sword come, and blew not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. So the person dies and is taken away in iniquity. But look at what happened to the watchman. But the blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So a watchman is not just there to watch, but you have to sound alarm. You don't have to make the people do what you say, but your job is to bring the judgment, to bring the word of God, to bring direction, to bring the mind of God at, at every point in time. Verse 7. So thou, O son of man, I set, I have set thee a watchman. God said, I'm setting you up now as a watchman. Unto the house of Israel, the prophet, he was telling the prophet Ezekiel, Therefore, thou shalt hear the word of my mouth and warn them from me. Verse 8. When I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his ways, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require in thy hand. God is saying what will happen. Verse 9. Then we're going to talk about it. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his ways to turn from it, if he does not turn from his ways, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou shalt deliver thy soul. So the watchman is not just there as a title holder, but you are there, you are in the wire of God. If you also make a mistake of not warning the people if God has given you a word, when the rot of that world comes, you will not go unpunished as a watchman. But we are going to talk about another case here that, that will explain everything we have read. We are coming back to Ezekiel, Ezekiel 33. But let's go to what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 13. And that's where we are going to spend our time today. Matthew chapter 13, we are reading from verse 24 to 40. And we are going to take our time and read it and pray. The Bible says another parable he put forth unto them, saying, Jesus was saying now, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man which soweth good seed in his field. So there is a sower and there is a seed. But while men slept, while men slept, he, his enemy came and sowed tars among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared us also, verse 27 of 
Matthew chapter 13. The Bible said here, Makotoro Bosaka Taba. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didn't thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then had it died? And he said unto them, verse 28, An enemy has done this. Then the servant said unto him, Will thou then that we go and gather up, gather them up, gather the tars? But his, he said, Nay, least while ye gather the tars, you root up also the wheat from it. Verse 30. We are going to pause there. We are coming back to 34 to 40. Let both grow together until the harvest. There's a harvest time. Hallelujah. And in the time of harvest, I will say to the reaper, there's a reaper now. We know that there's a sower, there's a seed, there's a field. Now there's an enemy and there's a reaper. I will say to the reaper, gather ye first the tars. Bind them in the bundles to bond them, but gather the wheat also to my band. The wheat goes into my band, into the place of Storm. So let's talk about this. This 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 man. And we are going to say, who is this man? The parable he said about the kingdom of God. There's a sower. There's a sower. There's a sower that sows good seed. But there's an enemy. And why did the enemy encroach into the sea? The watchmen were not doing their job. You remember that, that no watchman was mentioned here, but Jesus used a phrase. He said, but wild men slept. Wild men slept. Some people are sleeping in their job. Wild men slept. The enemy came. The enemy came from behind and they took time to sow tasks among the, 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 the grains that have been sown. The wheat. And went his way. The Bible says he took time and do it and went his way. Look at verse 25. While men slept, his enemy came and saw tars among the wheat and went his way. So he was not afraid. He knew that the security was not there. He knew that nobody was watching over the seas. So he went and choked the seas. He saw tars. So when they, when they came back and saw that the seed had begun to grow, but there is wheat on it. There is there is stars around it. So the, the, the seed and the tar are struggling to get space. You know, when you sow a seed, you give space to sow another one so that the seed will have enough room to gather all it needs, the nutrients and the manure to be able to grow well. But when the enemy brings tars and sow around it, it will choke the seed. Some of them will not mature fully. Some of them will not mature to the capacity that you want them to be. But anyway, the seed grew, and also the tars grew also. That's the dangerous part of it. And when they saw it, they told the master, said, should we now gather the tars? He said, no, because it's dangerous now. The tars are so close to, this, to, the, to the wheat. If you gather the tars, you will kill the wheat. Let them grow, both of them. But at the time of harvest, when the word, the, the Lord will require of you, of everything, that every seed that we have sown, whether good or bad. The Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall reap. So when the time of harvest came, they came to harvest, but he told them first to gather the tasks. Why should they spend time? Probably he hired some laborers and they will work maybe two days, three days. They are not touching the, the wheat itself. They are gathering the tasks. And they took time to gather it. These are something you will throw away. But they, they, took, they did it consciously so that they don't obstruct the wheat. I don't know what task the enemy has sown in your life. Many of us, while we went to work, we got a job, we are just celebrating. The enemy came and sowed tar in our job. And there is some demon person that is always antagonistic against you at that job. Maybe you just got married. You have not even stepped into the marriage to enjoy the fruit of your marriage. There is a tar already. The enemy has sown some rock tars. 
That's why the, the that's why you don't have to sleep. In every blessing, some people think that until you are attacked, that's when you attack. The greatest way to defend is to attack first. You don't take anything for granted. The enemy is waiting for you to make mistakes, to go to sleep, to forget who you are, not to pray. And all those things, once it, 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 there's a loophole, the devil comes. The Bible says, if you break the head, serpent will bite. That's why we must try to live right. The Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. You can put it personal. Righteousness exalts a people. For sin is a reproach unto many. Once we begin to be in alignment with the will of God, consciously, not being compelled, nobody's watching you, but you just do the right thing. Then you see that the enemy will not have any loophole to come in. And sometimes many of us, we, 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 we began where we begin to pray, we begin to pray, we begin to pray. Our spiritual life is growing. We fast sometimes, we pray. We fast sometimes, we pray. We fast sometimes, we pray. And maybe what we are targeting, what we are doing, and we start to see things start to work out. And we go back and we sleep. Sleeping is not that you are physically sleeping, but your eyes was taken off the walls where you are watching. Remember where we read in Isaiah chapter 62 verse 6, I have set watchmen upon thy walls. They are watchmen in the spirit. You have to be a watchman over your family. If you are a Christian, your job is not just to be a Christian and maybe ask for things that God will do for you. One of your jobs is to watch over your family, watch over your children, guide them in the spirit. Because if something happened to them, God forbid, and you say, oh, well, it's not me that did it. It's my daughter or my son. God will hold you responsible because you did not sound the alarm. You did not tell them what is right. You did not teach them the way. And sometimes not only telling them is not enough. You have to pray against whatever the enemy might try to bring up in your family. And making the family to be, because God has view of the world. God has put you in a place, in a, in a job environment. And maybe you are the administrator there. God is setting you up to be a watchman over that job. I told you before that your job is a platform for you to do the will of God. Your work is what you do, but you also, while you are doing your work, you do the will of God. That's why we must take over the mountains of the world. We should not be sitting by the sideline and let the world throw everything at us and we complain what has not worked and what didn't work. If we were insiders, if we are inside, we can be able to be able to say what we want to happen. And sometimes you don't have to physically say them because silence is golden. God will give you the code of silence. But in your closet, you begin to pray them in. You can pray for your boss to change his mind and do what you want him to do without even confronting him or telling him that his policies are bad. You just go say, Lord, you have heard what my boss said. But Lord, you know that that is not right. This is what is going to happen. Lord, convict him. By the next day, he come back and say, hey, and you do know what? I think we just have to do it this way. And you will smile because you knew that you have corrected that policy in the inside. That's what, that was why Daniel was very powerful in his time. He was over the affairs of Babylon. He was brought there as a slave boy. He was brought as a captive. He was brought there as a property. But he later became the most powerful man in four kings. I'm telling you that four kings were at his disposal. He knows the mind of God. He does not challenge the king, but everything that comes up, Daniel goes into the spirit and changes it. He was virtually the king, the shadow king. You can do that at your job. You can do that in your business. You can do that for your family. You don't have to be the first son or the first daughter. You don't have to have the, the resources to make things happen. But when you see that things are not going right, you go into the closet and say, Lord, I was born into this family for a reason. I stand in the altar. I begin to speak over my husband, over my wife, over my son, my daughter, my father, my mother, Lekata Sokotobo, Rebaga Shikataba, because you are a watchman. Remember, if you did not do that and you say, well, it's not me. I'm praying for myself. So if they don't pray for them, that, that's, that's, that's upon them. I'm telling you, God is going to hold you responsible. Remember what happened to Eli? Eli was a faithful priest. He worked for God. The Bible didn't say that Eli was not doing his job. But at the time, he slept when it comes to his sons. His two sons, Hophini and Phinehas, they did terrible things in Israel, in the book of Samuel. But the Bible said 
Eli knew about it. He would tell them sometimes, but there's a way to speak to your souls. Even though they are not children, these guys were men, they have wives. They were committing adultery and fornication. They were taking the part of sacrifice that was meant for God. They, when it's time for them to take, instead of them to dip once and take, and whatever you get, they will dip two eyes or they will dip until they get the best part of the meat. They were perverting all kinds of things. And the people knew it. But their father was reluctant. Eli was the, was the high priest. Eli didn't do what his sons did, but he died because of it. You remember the first prophecy that God gave to Samuel was to speak to his boss, to go and tell Eli, this is what the Lord is saying. And what I'm going to do in your family and in Israel, the ears that hears it will twinkle. And when the children of God were taking into this battle with the Philistines, the sons of Eli went and brought the, the ark of God into the battle, knowing fully well that they were not in good terms with God. And that day, the ark of God was taken away. And Eli died, fell from his tomb, and said, the glory has departed from Israel. That is not your portion. Watchman. I have set much man upon thy words. Are you going to do persecute your work very well? So who is the enemy that so ties? The devil. Why the devil was able to come in and so tie in a place or in a business or in a family is because the watchman or the watchmen are not doing their job. When you are a watchman, you are like a reporter. You see something, you sound alarm. If the people are not hearing, you continue to sound alarm to men and to God. You go back to God and say, I see something that smells like a rat. I see something that is not right. God is going to restore this nation, America. I'm telling you, prayers have gone forth. Prayers have gone forth and prayer have continued to go until the dust is settled. This nation will come back to what it used to be. Because we slept. At the time, the church was just almost invisible. That's why we are called non-essential in the mix of COVID. The church is supposed to be the ones that direct the affairs of what is going on. Pastors should be called upon from time to time to government houses and ask what is going on. What is the mind of God concerning this? But the Bible, the, 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 the government of the world, including America, deemed that the church is non-essential, non-essential. That it should be closed, including bars like gyms and bab babi salons. The church was put in that category, non essential. And we have seen the result. But God is going to change that. And how do, will He change it? When the watchmen, we all as Christians, we begin to speak the mind of God, we begin to watch over our territory. Jesus told them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And when he was about to leave, he gave them a view of their territory. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until the spirit is come upon you and you shall receive power. You shall be empowered to be a witness, both in Jerusalem, that was their territory, and in Judea and to the uttermost part of the earth. So God has, every time God is calling a man, a woman, a person, God has a territory in view. Where we just read in Ezekiel 33, when God was explaining himself to Ezekiel, he told him, I have set you to be a watchman over the house of Israel. I have set you to be watchman. What we are doing here is not just to ask God to bless us, give us food. Those things are not what we ask when you have been matured in the kingdom. The Bible says your father knows that you are hungry. You will not ask him for fish and he'll give you snake or ask him for bread and he'll give you stone. Those are the things that children ask. We're supposed to be in the place where we look upon the nation upon the city, we pray over the land. We pray over the people in position of authority. We pray over the systems of government, the hospital system, the insurance system, the IT system. We begin to pray over the school system. We pray over the police system. We can change things, not just by going to riot on the street, but by speaking to God in the closest. That's the job of a watchman. And when we see rat or we smell rat, we sound the alarm. I see something that is not right. And we don't have to make people to do the right thing. We just have to tell them. And we take it back to God in prayer. Lord, help these people to live right. And you will see it happen. Let's go back into the book of 
Matthew 13. I want you to see verse 27. The Bible says, so Jesus said now here, so the servant of the householder came to him and said, sir, didn't thou sow good seed in thy field? The field is the territory. Where's comet? From where then had its tires? Where did the tires come from? And Jesus said in 28, we are reading Matthew 13, 28. And he said to them, an enemy has sown, I've done this, an enemy. An enemy. The watchman is there to watch over the city, watch over the family. The enemy cannot penetrate a territory that have a strong watchman. We are going to tell you one of your duties as a watchman because you are going to build a world. This is a world that is built with fire, lake of fire. God said, I have set a wall upon thy wall. I've set, I've, I've set a watchman upon thy wall. There's a wall in the spirit. I've set watchman upon thy wall. O Jerusalem, there's a wall that you build, the wall of fire that the enemy cannot penetrate. The Bible says when the enemy left, when the devils left God in Job chapter 1, and the Bible said God put a lake of fire round about Job. He told the devil, go try him, but don't touch his soul. But God put a protection around Job. That it doesn't matter what before Job, he will not die. There's a wall that you can build over your children, over your family, over your business. A wall that the enemy cannot, and you just don't build the wall and go. Because the Bible said, and the man, after he has sowed his seed, he went away. While men were yet asleep, so the man that sowed the seed might not be the one that watched over the seed. He has people he pays. So the, the sower is God himself. And we're gonna find it out now. As Jesus said it, let's go down to when we're reading, Jesus said to them, the sower is the son of man. Did you see it in your Bible? The son of man himself is the sower. Hallelujah. Lekata sokotobo. Rabaga shikata bali kanama. Okay, look, look at 34. See, all these things spoke Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without a parable, speak he not unto them. Verse 35. That he might fulfill which was spoken by the prophet saying, I will open my mouth in parable and I will alter all things which has been kept secret from the foundation of the world. There are secrets in the kingdom. That's why the Bible says, he that dwells in the secret place of the most high. So now let's go back to 37. And he answered and said unto them, he that soweth the good seed is the son of man, is God himself. God has sown us. We are the good seed. We are the good seed. Christians are the good seed. The field is our territory. The view, the place that God, God has put us in charge, like God put Adam in the garden called Eden. Adam was there, and the enemy came and sold us in his property and convinced his wife, and they sinned against God, and they lost that place. A lot of us, the story of Adam can be interpreted in our lives individually. And many times we say, oh, Adam, why was he so foolish? Many of us have fallen even below Adam's standard. Because we were sleeping. We were sleeping. And the enemy came and sought us. The Bible said the field is the world. Verse 38. You see the field. So he, he answered and said unto them, 37. He that soweth good seed is the son of man. Is God, Jesus Christ. The field is the world. It's our territory. It's our families. It's our ministry. It's our business. It's our job. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, the sons of God. But the tars are the children of the wicked one, the sons of enemies. The devil sent people, possessed men and women, to antagonize over you. And many times we just walk away. We don't fight back. The Bible said in verse 39, the enemy that sowed them is the devil. 
and the harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels of God. When the reapers shall come, they will take forth the tires, gather them together, and burn them with lake of fire. Then you can do the harvest. Verse 40. As therefore the tires are gathered and burnt in fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? And allowing the devil to take over your family. And you say, I don't know what to do. Let the spirit of intercession, intercession be born out in your life. Sometimes circumstance will lead us to pray. And when we set ourselves up there, we don't come back. We live normally there. And it becomes that way. I had a story one time in Africa of a lady. She was going to this church and every time a man proposed to her or comes close to her to get married to her, something happened, the person runs away. He never, and she began to get worried because it has played again and again. So one day she went and joined a local church that is close to her street. And this church, they have prayers every day. On this faithful Friday evening, they were having a vigil. So she got ready, she and her neighbor, and she went to church. While they were praying in church, the man of God came to her and said, there's a dual personality in her. And there's one that when she goes out to do her business or in the secular world, that, pers that personality possesses her, which is the spirit of Python, the spirit of divination. But when she's coming to church, the spirit leaves her. He said, that thing is laying in your bed now, waiting for you to come back home. But we pray and command it to die. And after they finished praying in the church, you know, she, she took it like normal prophecy. She came home and saw a snake laying on her bed, dried up. She was frightened and she, she, she called the pastor and the prayer was the prayer. That thing set her up into prayer mode. She became an intercessor. Even after she got married, she was in the intercessory part of the church and not just praying in the church environment, but praying in the personal place, praying for herself, her brothers and sisters. Sometimes God allowed things to happen to you to know whether you will come back and do your job. The Bible said the enemy came and so us while men were yet asleep. When men slept, he's a thief. The Bible said the thief cometh, John 10, 10, to steal, to kill, and to destroy. John chapter 10, verse 10. But Jesus said, in the be part of it, I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. We don't have to allow the devil to take our lunch every time. A lot of systems have been broken in America because we slept. The, the most grievous one is what happened to the church in this COVID. The church was deemed non-essential, non-essential. You know, sometimes when I try to wrap my mind in that, with all the things America have done in the church, and what position America possessed in the world as a force and as a power, which all these things came from the men of God that have worked hard behind the scene. But when trouble came, the church was deemed non-essential. That will show you that the, the, the watchmen, we, we did not do a good job. We didn't do a, do a good job. We, we, I think we, we, left, we kind of left our people and there was a loophole that the enemy came and so us that convinced the people and the politicians that we don't need these church people, we don't need pastors, we don't need prayer people, we don't need them. So they are non-essential. It's like a social gathering. But I'm telling you, the church that is coming out is not any kind of church. It's a man church. It's a man church. It's a church that knows who he is, a church that can take his place, a church that is a watchman. God said, I have remnant, about 7,000. When he was speaking to Elijah, Elijah said, everybody have bowed down to, to bow and they are kissing the ring of Jezebel, God said, no, 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 no. I have 7,000 men that have not kissed the ring of Jezebel, nor bow to bow. They are remnants, and those remnants are coming out. We are coming out to be stronger. Our voice will be loud, not just in the loud as a contest, but when we have the mandate to persecute and to judge lands, to speak the mind of God, and you are in that army. It's called a moral army. The army of God, we are coming back like a Shunammite woman that will have two faces of it. Not just are we going to have an army on earth, we are going to have an army 
that also will be in the spirit. I remember when Joshua, I think Joshua chapter 5, Joshua was about to confront Jericho. The Bible says why Joshua was, was praying. God told him what to do. But he saw a man. He didn't know that this is not an ordinary human being. And when Joshua saw the man in the spirit, he said, are you with us or are you against us? But the man introduced himself to Joshua and told him not just, I'm not for you and I'm not against you. I am one of the commandants of the army of heaven. So while Joshua was preparing his armories and his soldier of earth, God has his army in the spirit. Angels of God that are armed to the, to the teeth, prepare. But it, it was possible because Joshua and his leaders, they were in their places. They were doing the will of God. God has to send his heavenly army. The wall of Jericho was not just a wall. It was a cube. Each side, the side of the wall and the width of the wall is the same size. So the wall couldn't have fall. If it falls, it will be still the same size because it was like a cube shake. But the Bible says it sank. Those angels of God sank the wall. In the name of Jesus Christ. Are you on the lost side? Hallelujah. If you look at Joshua chapter, chapter 5, look at how the angel introduced himself. I think verse 14. He said, Nay, he said, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come. And Joshua fell on his face on the earth. When Joshua was running his mouth, asking him, are you with us? Look at verse 13. Let's go back. And it came to pass when Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went, Joshua went unto him and said unto him, Are thou for us or for the adversaries? Are you with us or are you against us? Because they were watching that God had his army also. That battle of Jericho was fought by the angels of God. The children of God never did it. So because Joshua was too fast to speak, the angel told him something in verse 14. He said, and he said, nay, but as a captain, I'm not for you and I'm not against you, but as a captain of the host of the Lord, I'm a captain. That he told him his rank, his position in the military. I am now come. And Joshua fell to his face to the earth and did worship. And he said unto him, what? said my Lord unto his servant. What did God say? And the captain of the lost host said unto Joshua, loose thy shoes from off thy foot. For the place where you are standing is holy. And Joshua did so. The angel began to command him. He said, I'm not for you and I'm not for, against you, but I am a captain in the army of the Lord. I have set watchmen on my walls. Are you a watchman? Because the moment you activate the spirit of intercession, God will back you up with angels that will come and help you in every battle. When the enemy comes, because you have seen it, Joshua was in the spirit. That's why he was able to see the angel of God, drawn his sword, and he was able to speak to him, say, are you are there with us or with our adversary? Are you with us? Or are you with the Jerichans? The angel said, no, I'm not with them. I'm not with you. I am under assignments. I am here to do something. I am a member of the lost army. I'm a captain in the host of the lost army. There are captains that are set in different places. But if we cannot watch very well, the enemy can slip in and so tired. The ability to sound the trumpet is in us. And it is our duty that we do that. Hallelujah. Look at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 17. The Bible says, Also, I set watchmen over you, saying, Hacking to the sound of the trumpet. Hacking to the sound of the trumpet. But they said, We will not hack it. Your job as a watchman is to be a reporter. When there's foul play, when you see rat, when you smell rat, when you see something that is not right, you pray against it and you sound the alarm. The Bible says, If the people do what you have said, Nothing will happen. But if you don't do it, you will partake of, their, of anything. Jeremiah 31 verse 6, the Bible says, For there shall be a day, a day, 
that the watchmen upon the mount of Ephraim shall cry, Arise ye and let go up to the Zion, unto the Lord our God. There's a time that we come, the, the, the watchmen will cry, say it is time to go up. Arise, let us go up to Zion. But are we going to hit to the cry? If you look around you, whichever city where you are, in any country, if you look very well in the spirit, there are watchmen that God has set. They might not even have a name. They might not even have anything for you to see them. Sometimes God makes them so insignificant and invisible, but they are very strong. They are the ones controlling the affairs of things. And you can be that person, but you must activate the spirit of intercession. Not just asking for food and good clothes and good life for your family and good house. Those are, those are baby things. Jesus said in Matthew 23, he said, we should stop talking about the, the little things and let's go to the weighty things of the Lord. They are weightier things of the Lord, which have to do with righteousness. He told them, he said, this kind cannot go except by praying and by fasting. There are some things you do to increase your spiritual capacity. Praying and fasting is one of the greatest tools that will bring you up to the place that you ought to be. Because every time you are waiting upon the Lord, your strength is being renewed. The Bible says, for dead that wait upon the Lord, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wing as eagle. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Watching over your city. And it is by assignment. Once you get to the place of, it can be a second stand that puts you there. God will assign a territory to you. There's a territory in view from the day you begin born again. God knows the territory. Remember the madman of Gadara when Jesus crossed over. And the madman came from the tomb and said, Thou son of God, what have you to do with Jesus Christ? And Jesus looked at him and said, What is your name? He said, We are Legion. That means we are many. Legion is about 2,000 to 6,000 army. And Jesus cast them out to the swine. The guy said, I will follow you. Jesus said, No, go back to your family. His territory was his community, that place, that the Nazareth, Gadara. He was the one that God has placed there. But the devil saw him in time and went and put the spirit of badness in him to stop him from exercising his authority and dominion in that territory. There are some people, Jesus said, follow me. But this guy wanted to jump the boat. Jesus said, no, no, no. Go back to your family and tell them what has happened to you and tell them what God has done for you. And that guy began to preach. He was sanctioned and he was commissioned that day. And there's another thing about being commissioned. Once you begin to do the will of God and God begin to expand your territory like the, the disciples were gathered in the upper room, they were praying. And the Bible said, God, Jesus came and told them, said, tarry in Jerusalem. By this time they have prayed for 40 days until the spirit of God has come upon you. By the 50th day, he said, and you shall be witness both in Jerusalem, which is their territory, and Judea and Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. There are, there are territories in view. And God can increase it. These guys were Galileans. These guys were just laymen, fishermen. People that were just not, not anything to record with in the society. But prayer, intensive prayer, brought them to the place of stadium. That Peter came, Peter that denied Jesus Christ, came out on the day of Pentecost when the fire of God was upon them. Light shined in darkness and darkness could not comprehend it. He said, oh, you men of Jerusalem, the Jesus that you killed is alive. And the Bible says over 3,000 people gave their life that day because God has the territory in view. What territory have God called you to occupy? You are not just anybody. You were formed in God before the foundations of the earth, before God even created heaven and earth. You have been in existence. We have to stand our ground. But how do you do that? It's by active prayer. Prayer. I told you the only way to keep our communication, our, our relationship with God alive and alive is by fellowship, like what we do, gather in free evening and pray, and by also communication, which is prayer. Prayer. Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and the Bible says, men ought always to pray and not faith. Always, not some. Always to pray and not faith. Makotoro busakataba. Lekana mashikataba. Rikata sokoto. We are going to pray. Go to pray. Look at Proverbs chapter 14. 34, 14, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach. 
unto men. Sin is a reproach. We have to begin to do the right thing. And you, can, you cannot live right us until you begin to believe right. The Bible says, by strength shall no man prevail. If you want to do it by yourself, you will fail. You will fail. You can't do the right thing if you don't believe the right thing. Your belief is what controls your being. Your, and as you believe, you begin to act based on your belief. And that's how you grow. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing, hearing, but the word of God. What you have heard and how you believe it, you act upon it. That begins to put you in the path of righteousness. And you see everything that has gone wrong will begin to go right. Because every time there's righteousness, there's an exaltation. It's an exaltation of the people, of the nation, of the land. And God will begin to heal your land. Second Chronicles 7 14. God said we should come back to Him. If my people that are called by my name shall humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, God said, I will hear from heaven and I will come down and I will heal their land. Let our lands be healed, especially the land of America. It needs to be healed now. The country is so divided that if we, we conduct an election, we cannot have a result immediately. With all the systems that are on ground, you will see how the devil has sown tires that people don't believe the system anymore. People are doubting the capacity of the system. The system that have carried this country for over 200 years. But the devil cannot because we are watching. We are watching. Even if we have slept before, we are awake now. We begin to take back what the enemy has sown in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Magasi Kataba. Micah chapter 7, verse 4. And we are going to pray. The best of them is like a barrier. Micah 7 verse 4. The best, the watchman, the best of them is like a barrier. It's a prayer. And the most upright was than a ton of age. It's like a fence. The day of God visits you. The, the day God visits you has come. God has visited your family. God has visited your home. God has visited your church. God has visited your business, your job. The day God visits you has come. It has come. The day God visits America is here. Integrity and dignity will come back to this nation. We will start to see our politicians and people that have regard for us and dignity again. Because God is going to shift the, 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 the fabrics of the system. There's a paradigm shift in the spirit. And things that are happening, we don't know how it's happening. The Bible says the wind blow it. We know, it, know where, what, where it's coming from and we don't know where it's going. There's a restructuring in the spirit. But I want you to see the next stanza there. It said, the day you are watch man sound the alarm. Now is the time of your confession. When the watchmen begin to sound alarm, King James said people will begin to be perplexed. People will begin to be sober. People will begin to confess. I want us to speak and say, God, forgive us if we have not watched well. If we have allowed the enemy to sow tires in what we are doing, Maybe we didn't even know consciously that we are placed in any way you find yourself as a Christian. You are not just there to mop the place or to look at the place. It can be a job that you are offered. But I told you that your job is a platform for you to do the work of God, to do the will of God. Even though you do your work, you do the will. Say, God, have mercy upon me, including myself. If I don't tell you the truth, God will hold me responsible for your life. Even if you are the one that committed anything, God will still hold me responsible. That's why we are watchmen. That's why I have to pray for you all. Pray for everyone that hears us day and night. Let God have mercy upon us in any form or way that we have not stood in the right path of God. God have mercy. Have mercy, O Lord. Have mercy, Father. In the name of Jesus. Have mercy, O Lord. Have mercy, Father. Have mercy, o Lord. Have mercy, Father. By the authority and the power in the name of Jesus, we bring ourselves unto you as a living sacrifice that you look on us with your mercy, saturate our heart and mind, cleanse us with the blood of Jesus. Wash us all of our, make us worthy of thy praises, that the words of our mouth and the material of our heart shall be acceptable. Saturate our heart and mind with the blood. Let the blood begin to speak for us now. Great things. Let the blood speak salvation. Let the blood speak thy power. Let the blood speak, love. Let the blood speak healing upon the land of America. We pray for this nation. Lord, heal the land of America. The land of Georgia, the land of Guinea County, the land of America. Heal the world. Lord, a lot of things have gone wrong. People hate each other as if we are enemies. We are children of God. 
Even in the church, there is a white church and there's a black church. There's an African church. We are segmented and divided. A house divided among itself cannot stand. Lord, let there be healing again where we can come back and praise God and know that we are sons of God. It doesn't matter whatever side of the equation, whether you are blue or red, whether you are white or black, whether you are Hispanic, Asian, African American, Indian American, Native American, whatever, Arab American, let us come together to begin to heal this land. Lord, heal our land. If my people that I call my, my, my name shall seek my face, as we seek your face now, may we find you, O Lord, Father. The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Help us to locate your right hand and come to your presence. Thank you for the healing that has come upon this nation and this land. In the name of Jesus Christ. We bless you, Lord, for the, as the spirit of intercession is activated upon us. We have been praying, but help us to pray better and pray more. Pray according to the will of God. We pray for the nation of America. We pray for our families. We pray for protection for our sons and daughters, for our ministry. Everyone that has been a part of this ministry, directly or indirectly, even those that are watching us from afar, we release the grace of God. Let the power of God upon my life, upon the Bible says the husband man shall be the first partaker, be released upon them by the authority and the power. In the name of Jesus, we ask for all that they have desired in their heart. Lord, make it to come to pass if it is in your will. For the Bible says, all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called. Everyone that is called according to thy purpose. Whatever they are doing, Lord, make it to come together for good. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In a couple of days, we are going to know the results. So let's calm down. Don't be part of any kind of protest or whatever. The devil might want to lure you and say, oh, that's, it's happening here. Don't go there. Let's just stay calm. And let God do what he's doing. God is in the mix of everything that is going on now. Amen. If you are here for the first time, you want to give your life to Christ, or you just want to be saved, I want you to say after me. The Bible says Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and, 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 and 10. If we confess, if we believe that Jesus is our Lord and Savior and confess him as our that he died and resurrected for our sins. The Bible says we shall be saved. I just want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart that you died and resurrected for my sins. And I confess with my mouth that you are my Lord and Savior. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. Congratulations again. You are saved. Just look for a Bible believing, just fuse yourself and let us continue to do the will of God and let God be glorified in our life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I will see you tomorrow. I love you with all my heart. But above all, Jesus loves you the more. Please, can you click like on this video? If you have watched it, just click like. If you don't want to even write email or something, because we get more views when we click something. When we click, I love it. I say, so, or say something. Comment. Whatever it is, do something. Just click like, and it will give us more views. More people will hear the word of God. God bless you. Amen.